Today we're going to review 10 products loosely related to mountain biking. Some of them I bought and some were sent to me by various companies. Like everyone else, I have my biases, but I'll do my best to tear all these products apart. Here goes. Let's start with the Sennheiser MKE-2 microphone. It's a clown nose sized microphone that attaches to the waterproof case of a GoPro Hero 4. It has its own circuit board and a mini USB cable. The whole unit is water resistant and the clown nose is supposed to suppress wind noise. It looks great for surfing, motorsports, and skiing, but I can only speak for how it applies to mountain biking. As many of you may know, most mountain bike vloggers use the internal mic on the Hero 4, paired with a stabilizer. The sound from this setup is so good that it's hard to imagine it being any better. Oh! To use the MKE-2, you need to nix the stabilizer and triple the size of the GoPro with the case and mic. What's worse, it only works with the Hero 4. The Hero 5 has been out for almost a year, and that thing really does need a mic. So we've established that the MKE-2 is bulky and barely applicable to mountain biking. But how does it perform? To find out, I did a little test. First, I descended this rock face using a Hero 4 with just the internal mic and no stabilizer. Listen to how that sounds. I am here in plenty of wind, so I know that if the wind filter's not working, we're gonna hear it. This is a lot bumpier than it probably looks. Whew. All right, time to put on the brakes. So we'll see how that sounds. Next, I took the same line with the Sennheiser mic. And this time, I think I'm going a little faster because uh, <laughs> I already tested out this descent. Man, if you fell on this, it would hurt. All right, time to put on the brakes. All right. And that's the Sennheiser mic. Okay, so it sounds really good. Almost perfect. My friend Jordan actually wears one on his full face helmet and syncs the sound with his chest cam. But most people wouldn't be willing to go through all that trouble or pay $200 for this. As it applies to mountain bike vlogging, I don't think the MKE-2 is worth the trouble. It could be great, but it would need to be smaller and work with the Hero 5. On to the MRP ramp control cartridge. This thing replaces the top cap on your Fox or RockShox suspension fork and allows you to control the air volume or ramp up. Here we have a fork without any ramp up. It just squishes down with the same firmness the whole way. Add ramp up and it gets more progressive. The MRP ramp control module does this with a turn of a knob, which is a game changer. Without this, you need to let all the air out and wrench off this top cap, which you attach these tokens to. That's a pain. Having this knob allows you to actually adjust your ramp up on the trail, giving you the perfect ride from minute to minute. <laughs> Dude, you alright? At a bike park, you would want more progression to keep from bottoming out. On a windy backwoods trail, you would want linear travel for a cushy ride. The MRP ramp control module is relatively easy to install and totally worthwhile, but it ain't cheap. If you would benefit from this, it's worth the money. If not, you can still use tokens for just a few bucks. If you want to get a better understanding of air volume, click the link at the end of the video for my tutorial on suspension fork settings. Next is the Cali Protective's Interceptor Enduro Helmet. In my last video, I reviewed the Smith Rover, which is a $120 helmet that I like very much. The Cali Interceptor is $180, and inferior to the Rover in some ways. In fact, the Rover has a nicer finish, a sturdier visor, and straps that lay flatter on your face. So why would you get the Interceptor? Well, I can only speak for how it feels on my head, where it fits better than anything I've ever tried. It stays perfectly in place with barely any pressure on the straps. The deal sealer is this solid mount, which can be used for a light or action camera. It's also supposed to be really good at protecting your head. So I like the Interceptor enough to make it my primary helmet, but I wouldn't want to pay full retail for it. There are just too many other options. Let's take a look at another Cali product, the Venture Gloves. Let me start by saying that these gloves breathe well, almost too well. 
The sides of the fingers are made from this light but durable fabric, which lets air through. The rest of the gloves are armored in all the right places to protect your fingers while bushwhacking. I think they're well worth $40, but they're only good for the summer or warm climates. I'll need to get something heavier for the winter months. Let's move on to another video product, the Hero 5 Session. This has become my main 4K helmet cam. The video and sound quality are adequate, and the form factor is second to none. The battery life is enough for one long ride if managed properly. I also love how easy it is to remove from its housing for third person shots. There are very few things I don't like about the Hero 5 session, but for most people it may be overshadowed by the Hero 5 Black. For an extra $100 you get a screen and noticeably better video quality. So I think the session makes a good auxiliary camera for enthusiasts and professionals. If you're looking for one do everything action camera, go for the Hero 5 Black or the Hero 4 Silver. That's my two cents. While we're talking about GoPro, let's take a look at the Karma Grip, which I'm still trying to fit into my equipment rotation. It's a stabilizer made by GoPro, which you can use handheld or with this $100 extension cable. I use this overpriced cable to mount the stabilizer to my chest and stick the handle in my pocket. It's really bulky, but the stabilization is exceptional. This is why Phil Metz uses it, and he shreds really hard. Yahoo! Still, Phil sinks his sound from a helmet cam. Paired with a Hero 5, the Karma sounds like total trash. At best, it sounds muffled. Sorry. <laughs> At worst, you can hear the motors. To get a Karma, the Cable, and a Hero 5, you'll be out $800. You could pick up an Evo and a Hero 4 for under 6 for near identical video, far superior sound, and way less bulk. So unless you've learned to tame this thing like Phil has, I'd wait for the next version or pick it up when it goes on sale. The next three products are from a British company called 76 Projects. They make some interesting stuff. The first product is the Piggy, a bracket that repositions your water bottle cage to allow for storage. This is great because dropper posts have made saddle pouches a thing of the past. With jersey pockets only providing limited space, it's nice to have some storage on your bike for a tool, some food, your car keys, and other stuff. With the Piggy, you could actually strap down just about anything, or even a mini tripod like I did. For many riders, the Piggy will be of no benefit, but some of you are looking for something like this. I'll be using this on my hardtail during solo rides, free as a bird with no pack. The next product is the Cable Bobbin. This is a marble sized clip that lets you secure your cables. The bobbin adapts to whatever angle they cross at. The thing about these bobbins is that they're only marginally better than zip ties, while being many times the size. For that reason, nobody will be buying these out of pragmatism, but rather for fun. They're sold in different colors, and 76 Projects even implies that they'll print you a custom color on request. Because the bobbin is fun and does everything it promises, I think it's cool. Just don't expect it to make your bike faster. On to something that looks like a bobbin but does something far different. The Cable Oiler. This is meant to be put in line with a gear or brake cable to provide a port to add oil to it. If you went to junior high school, you're familiar with the concept of capillary action. See how the oil kind of seeps into the port? That's how the oiler works. Is it necessary or useful? It could be, just maybe not for me. I never have the same gear cable for more than a few months, so rarely do I need to oil one. I'm also concerned that this port could actually allow contaminants into an otherwise sealed system. What do you guys think? Have any of you used this product at length? Let me know. Now on to a product that isn't related to mountain biking, but is related to video. I use it often to create content for this channel. Meet my dashcam, the Anchor Rove. Whenever your car is on, the Rove is recording. 
When it runs out of space, it writes over the oldest footage, automatically saving any instances where your car hit a bump or went bananas. If someone messes with your car while it's parked, it automatically detects the vibrations and starts recording. You can stick the Rove to your windshield and plug it into a power port, but I hardwired mine to reduce clutter. This would probably cost you between $50 and $100 to get done professionally. For a content creator like myself, the Rove is great. If I see something interesting or crazy, I can go back and pull the footage. The video quality isn't great though, and there's no way to get rid of this watermark without cropping. The Rove is under $100, extremely reliable, and super easy to use, so I like it. If it had a flat color profile and the ability to remove the watermark, I'd love it. So there you go, 10 product reviews in one video. If you found these reviews useful or just entertaining, give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for content like this every week. Before you leave a comment asking more about this stuff, remember that Google is your friend, and that I left links to everything below. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time.